everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Primrose Zetebima. I post content about academics, career, and adulting. And please make sure that if you're watching my content, you have subscribed to this channel because it does matter a lot to me. It also serves as motivation for me to continue to create because then it means that my content is relevant. So for context, I hold a PhD in political studies, a master's in international relations and honors in gender and transformation and a general bachelor of social science degree. So what matters out of this month for today is me having majored in gender and transformation because I'm going to give advice to anyone who wants to know some tips that will be helpful if you're undertaking a major in gender studies. I definitely think that this is a major that many people don't pursue, whether at undergraduate or postgraduate level, for various reasons. And one of them, obviously, being the career prospects, right? We're not very clued up on what it means to actually pursue a career if you're interested in gender transformation issues, gender justice, um, from a political perspective, from a social perspective, from a health perspective, amongst other areas of interest. So... Having majored in gender, I mean, I took the deep plunge, right? I did it over three years of my undergraduate studies. It was one of my majors, and I graduated with distinction as a major. And then, obviously, I did it in my honors because I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm very good at this, so I'm going to pursue it at postgraduate level. And fast forward to 2023, I'm an experienced gender studies lecturer. So it has worked for me, right? It has paid my bills somehow, and... I'm still in love with the major. So I think that if you are interested in matters that are linked to gender and sexuality, it is important for you to pursue them regardless of your career path because gender issues hit hard, right? We live with them on a day-to-day -day basis. We are struggling with high rates of intimate partner violence. We are struggling with high rates of gender-based discrimination and different forms of harassment in the public as well as in the private sphere. And we are still forging ahead and trying to figure out how we can live in a world where systems that are dominated, for example, by patriarchy and heteronormative expectations and values don't lead to other people living their lives marginalized, discriminated against, criminalized, and so forth. So I think those are major motivations for anyone that has interests that relate to gender justice to pursue them regardless of your career path. All right. So I think that if you're interested in gender-related matters and you are majoring in gender studies, you need to make sure that you're also watching content that will help you there are a wide range of gender justice issues and sometimes depending on how your lecturers curate their courses you may not be able to touch on everything so educate yourself on different course cutting issues it could be gender and education gender and the economy gender and culture gender and religion gender peace and security and so forth and so forth so educate yourself on a wide range of areas and sectors in which gender um, has been infused as part of like the key interests and things that need to be changed so that you are well aware of what is available in terms of your options, right? So then number two is obviously establish a niche or a few niche areas that cater to your interests. So I think, for example, nowadays, a lot of people are looking at gender in relation to climate change. A lot of people are looking at gender in relation to migration. Several people also looking at gender in relation to politics, gender in relation to religion, amongst other niche areas. So that's also important, right? Because you don't want, as an academic, to be trying to do research and writing on a wide range of areas and not having an area in which you specialize in because you will need to specialize and have a niche area, for example, for your master's or for your PhD. And even at honors level, when you do your research project, you are required to have an area that you narrow down your interests or focus towards. So that is very important. How do you establish this? Again, it comes down to educating yourself, right? That's point number one. So read up on issues, follow organizations and people that are advocates in different areas, and also make sure that 
you follow what is in your course outline and try and figure out how they can help you to also establish your niche areas. So for example, with me, I was very passionate about the work of the United Nations, very passionate about the work of the African Union. And as it stands now, with my policy research orientation, of course, as a PhD in politics, I'm very much interested in the United Nations in its work towards women, peace and security, and the United Nations and its commitment towards gender equality through the Sustainable Development Goals. And because of my interest in the African Union, I'm also educating myself now on the African Union's Maputo Protocol, which relates to matters of gender equality and women's empowerment. So research, educating yourself, those are steps that you will continuously take as you go across, like, up your professional ladder. Okay, so I've spoken about educating yourself and establishing a niche. My number three here is give yourself a worldly muscle. Let us be honest, right? The world still very much is linked to the old belief that if you're not a lawyer, doctor, engineer, and now a person in tech and all of that, you know, your career it doesn't matter to a large extent in terms of what it means, the global appeal, even local appeal in different countries and how people perceive you as an expert. And so if you are a gender studies major, for example, I would advise you to take gender with law, I would advise you to take gender with economics, I would advise you to take gender maybe with social work, I would advise you to take gender and fuse it, for example, with the qualification in public health or qualification in medicine amongst other areas these are the ones that like just came to me as i was jotting down points for this video so i think it's also very important to give yourself a professional muscle in an area that is perceived as dominant um, in terms of professional qualifications and also in terms of specializations and also in terms of what matters for government so for example your chances are higher of perhaps of joining a government or a bank or an international institution if you've got gender with economics, gender with law, right? So try and find ways of fusing those together. Why I'm emphasizing this, I was exposed to a university, the University of Cape Town, which does actually offer students the opportunity to take more than two majors and students in their humanities faculty can actually undertake these options that I'm telling you about in terms of fusing gender studies with another major. All right, so now moving on, this is very biased. I think that if you're interested in an issue, you should be able to write on it. You should be able to do research on it and, and do publications. You should be able to be an advocate in the area of interest. Because after all, the main reason why we want issues that we care about the most to be issues that the rest of the world cares about and pays attention to and provides solutions towards is because, you know, information needs to go to the people. So write about it, right? Do research and send this information to publications, whether it's the media, whether it's academic journals, whether it's you writing a book, posting guidelines on a blog or website or doing vlogs and stuff like that. Nowadays, a lot of people are into podcasting. So that's another way. Some other people also are involved in advocacy directly by participating in campaigns, whether online or offline in terms of marches and protests, making submissions to parliament, you know, signing petitions and all of that. So be super involved, right? Drive your interests, live it, breathe it, dance around it and all of that. And then now the next point I have here is engage with multiple stakeholders. This matters a lot and it's still linked to the previous point when I was speaking about making the issues that matter the most to you matter to many more people, right? Multiple stakeholders could include people from government, policy makers, right? Politicians, non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, religious institutions, it could be a church, right? Um, universities as well. There are various societies and clubs you can be part of. You can also be part of a gender studies department or any department that is within the university that is pushing a gender agenda. So engaging with people that are dealing with gender justice related issues in different areas is also helpful for you so that you, you know, you contribute 
more generally and also you also learn about other people's specializations and how they're tackling gender-based issues and you also collaborate you know cooperation is key when we're speaking about matters that have to do with societies so make yourself visible make yourself available to engage in multi-stakeholder projects whether as an intern as a volunteer speaking at an event helping to organize you know helping to draft proposals amongst other issues and so this can tie into, for example, me encouraging you to give yourself a muscle in another area, right? You've done your economics, you've done your law, you've done your social work, and now you can engage with multiple stakeholders in those areas. You're well-versed in the jargon that they use in their work. You're well-versed in their systems that they use in their work. But you're bringing in that gender edge. So I think it's very helpful. Now, my next point is also put yourself out there as an educator perhaps also biased because you know i believe that in this influencer age the issues that matter the most especially to young people are usually issues they come across particularly maybe on tiktok on youtube instagram to a limited extent so please if you can if you've got the the energy and the drive or if you can at least summon some kind of spirit to put yourself out there by creating your own content for example I curate courses, I teach on various platforms, and I get paid for it. Sometimes I do voluntary work as a guest poet, as a guest speaker, but I'm putting out the message. And also just organizing with different groups in different areas, perhaps in your community, perhaps in your school, university, workplace, and make sure that you're all pushing up, you know, a gender justice oriented agenda what are the gender issues within the organization within your community within your church and whatnot and what can you do about it by actually creating a team of committed people by creating content that is committed towards those issues and giving it out to people and educating them engaging in dialogue because dialogue is super meaningful because without interacting and sharing perspectives you cannot get a full grasp of how certain issues can be resolved, particularly those relating to human relations. Now, my next point comes to try your best to incorporate your gender and related perspectives into your research, particularly at postgraduate level. This matters a lot because there are universities which publish honors research projects that publish master's dissertations, PhD thesis and whatnot. And so if you've provided a gender perspective in your research, it will be helpful because one day someone will come across your study, come across your research, and they may be compelled to read that gender related space, right? Because I mean, they've already come to your work, they love it. So why not just also go through the section that covers gender? Also, some people have been looking and scratching left, right and center for content that relates to gender in different areas. And they can't find it because most researchers, particularly in the past, just didn't care much about the gender perspectives that can be incorporated in different types of research. So I highly encourage that. So I'm also going to put myself here <laughs> at a hot spot and ask myself, so Primrose, how have you incorporated these recommendations that you're providing in this video? Number one, educating myself on different cross-cutting issues. I do think that taking politics and taking international relations and taking gender studies help me because I think those areas try in many ways to look at gender-related matters. So I was able with my gender studies-based theories and literature to critique what I was studying when we were looking, for example, at what the Department uh, for Women, Children and People with Disabilities was doing in terms of gender studies, in, in, in terms of gender justice, rather, within the South African context. When I was doing international relations topic, I was able to pick up the gaps in terms of how limited some of the approaches that governments or the United Nations are taking in trying to promote what they define, for example, as women's empowerment or gender equality. And... In terms of establishing a niche, which is number two, I've always struggled. I know I mentioned my focus now on women, peace and security through the UN and also looking at uh, the African Union's Maputo Protocol. But even then, still there, sometimes I'm like, what exactly is my interest? So over the past two years, I've dedicated myself to doing quite a lot more research on the role of women in politics and international relations. Um, the role of African women specifically also, because it speaks to 
me, right? Because I'm an African woman and I'm in international relations as a researcher, as an analyst. And so I'm trying to go further by actually engaging with women that are involved in politics as politicians. And also I've done a lot of research and presentations of women that are in international relations as policymakers, as heads of um, international organizations, and as women playing different roles in diplomacy and in international organizations. So I think I'm heading towards women in politics and women in international organizations, as well as women in international relations as academics. It is still a mouthful. I'm only 30. I feel like by the time I'm 18, I will know what my niche is. All right. So number three, I said, give yourself a worldly major or muscle. You know what? This lesson came too late in my life. I wish I had studied gender with law or gender in economics or gender with law in economics uh, because I think it would have helped me, particularly in terms of catapulting my career. Yes, I'm interested in women, peace and security. But for example, if I had carved a muscle in terms of human rights law, I think I would be in a better place by now. Yes, I'm interested in looking at how the African Union has established a Maputo protocol that is linked to gender equality on the continent, but I think as an economist, I would probably have done much more. Or maybe if I had done public health, I would have looked at gender justice in relation to public health matters. Is it too late for me to carve that worldly muscle? I don't think so necessarily because I've actually realized that I am increasingly um, getting involved in projects that require me to do a lot of research on gender justice and law. So somewhere along the lines, I am covering that muscle by doing research. I don't think I'll necessarily want to go and do um, an undergraduate degree in law, maybe a postgraduate qualification, even if it's like a postgraduate diploma, but I think that's needed. So I'm going to go that way. I've applied to do a program that is linked to feminist economics. I have not been accepted yet, but if I get accepted, that's a welcome development because definitely it will help me to mix gender, law, and economics. And of course, I'm already doing gender and politics. Now, number four, I said be a writer, be a researcher, be an advocate. No brainer. I'm already doing this in many ways. Research, publications, I teach, and number five, I said engage with multiple stakeholders. Wherever I work, people know me. I will bring that gender justice muscle with me. I will educate people on issues that need to be known if they're not aware of it, if it's not in their policies, if it needs to be incorporated. And when we need to call out toxic cultures, whether that are linked to patriarchy, whether they're linked to ageism or sexism and whatnot. So I'm always on that tip and I don't care if people hate me for it, but I think some things need to be said. All right, so number six, I said, put yourself out there again, write, speak, organize, educate. I'm actively in it. I have been teaching gender studies related content since 2015. Well, of course, in academia, because that incorporates the theory I've learned that helps me to touch on case studies, current and old, and also that helps me to find ways of introducing to students to the work that I'm also doing. So I think I'm also quite involved in that regard. And then the last one I said, incorporate um, gender perspectives into your research. Sometimes this is hard, but I have done it. So for example, when I did my master's research, I was doing a study on uh, South Africa's regulation of undocumented Zimbabwean migrants, a program which led to South Africa providing a special permit for Zimbabweans. And very few people actually look at how, when South Africa, you know, released this process, right? Um, they didn't think very much about, when we say undocumented, illegal people and whatnot, to what extent can we bring in gender? How are women affected? There's a lot of women who are migrants, but most of them are relegated to Sectors, for example, such as domestic work, most of them do care work that is defined as cheap labor in many instances. Many of them are selling goods, um, different products, particularly, for example, on the streets and whatnot. Some of them are involved in sex work. And when you're just like, if you're undocumented, rock up at home affairs offices and we're going to register you. I mean, what issues can come about that are linked to that? And also, the fact that, for example, women might struggle to get certain services, for example, the other permit processes required people to pay for services, required people to have access to the internet, to be 
conversant with how you can apply for these processes online and whatnot. And like gender perspectives were also left out of that. So I tried my best. Um, and there is a gender studies, gender justice section in my master's thesis. Now, in my PhD, I did not look at gender to a large extent because, to be quite honest, the focus of my research was not going that way. And I decided not to have a dedicated section on it. But I do think that in future research, which is what I ended up doing in my postdoctoral research, I ended up focusing a lot on gender-related matters. And out of interest, uh, if you've watched this video until the end, then you will know this. I was doing a postdoctoral research fellowship in political studies in 2021 and 2022. As of 2023, I'm a postdoctoral research fellow who is focusing on gender justice and particularly looking at the transformative efforts that are being undertaken by various universities to ensure gender justice in their systems. So this is going to be very interesting. My niche has got me here. I am getting paid for it. So it's possible to be a gender studies major and make it in life. <laughs> All right, that sounds so cheesy. I'm done for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you've not subscribed, please remember to do so. Please feel free to also like, comment, and share this content. Bye.